What up, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. Today we're gonna to talk about mocking dependencies using partials via Lodash. What that means is instead of using Shenon, which as you can see, a lot of setup and a lot of teardown here, it also has things you gotta keep track of. The fact that you modified request, you have to remember that you modified this particular piece and restore it with some method that's actually not part of request API, but Shenon's API. And you have to get these bigger and bigger as your application grows. So for example, we are only exposing get weathered in here. We're not exposing any of these privates. And it's hard enough to make sure that you call get weather with the right data if possible to trigger certain types of successes or failures to make all your code run, basically all your privates. If you're using something like TypeScript, or some other language that enforces public and private, you only test your publics. Things like this get really large because you have to make sure that the data is set up in such a way and all the knobs are turned a certain way to make sure that that code is run in that order. Now this problem doesn't go away 100% in functional programming and testing with other ways, but it's slightly mitigated. We can at least prevent the fact we don't have to remember anything. We're just creating data. We have no state. There's nothing to turn on or off. We don't have to turn the lights off when we leave kind of thing. And the other reason I don't necessarily like this is that this is mutable state. The request is modified. The request module doesn't work like that. And we've changed how it works, obviously before a project setup, but we've affected other things. Maybe there's no referential transparency. What that means is there could be other people using this that we don't know about. Before we can do mock independencies using partials instead of Shenon, we gotta know what a partial is. So we'll go to Sandbox here. A, a, a partial application or partially planned application really means a function that has one or more of its arguments already in there, ready to go. If you imagine a function, we'll do an old school one called say name, first name, last name. This function requires two parameters. Now, when I say the word require, it doesn't require anything. You can to nothing and it'll still work, sort of. So let's log it out. We'll say first name plus last name. And if we call this function with a grepay raven, and we run node sandbox, you'll notice that it prints out hello Jesse Warden. That's because the first parameter became first name and we added it in the string. The second warden is the second parameter and it became in last name. Whatever slot you put these in, slot number one becomes this name, slot number two becomes this name. This is the function definition and this is the function invocation or where you call the function or make it do its thing. Whatever you put in these parentheses is the parameter or the parameter order. And when we talk about parameter order, we mean from left to right. When we say first, we mean the one on the left. When we say second, it's one, two, starting from the left. You don't have to pass all parameters. I can pass just one and the function will still work. Now it might blow up if it's doing something special with last name, but understand that if you don't pass parameters, you don't pass anything, these will automatically be undefined. So when I rerun it, you notice it says undefined and defined. That's the same thing undefined. So just be aware that that's what it is. We're going to do the opposite. What if I wanted to say, say name, but instead of having to pass Jesse always as the first, I wanted it instead only pass the last name. So one way to do that is to create something called a partially applied function. So we're gonna do a function that calls a function, say Jesse, but it only takes the last name. We'll call say name and hard code the first parameter, Jesse, in the first name. But the second, we'll take whatever you give me. So now when we call say Jesse, warden, we only have to give it one parameter. And when we run it, it says the same thing as before, hello Jesse warden. So this function automatically has one of its functions automatically applied. There's a way to do this in Lodash that does two things for you. Well, really three, depends on how you look at it. First is Lodash has all these amazing features. But second is that if it does it in one line with a pure function, you actually don't have to write unit tests for this function. If, if, as long as you test this guy, then your function partial, if we do the exact same thing, say Jesse, the first parameter is say name, just like before. This is the function that we want to partially apply arguments to. And first parameter is Jesse. This function right here is about the same thing as this. So I'm just going to comment it out and use the new one. And you'll notice it prints the exact same thing and works the exact same way. The difference is in Istanbul and unit test coverage is this is considered already tested if say name is already battle tested. You're just sending new parameters against it. How does that apply to request? In functional programming, they like to encourage the things that you're gonna need the most to make that function work, go on the left. Things that are optional or user supplied or very, very dynamic, go to the right. And so that way on partial, you can start putting those things to the left because this is a very common operation. Is that I wanna put those things I know to the left. That's why Jesse starts from the left. 
if I were to put wood in here, I wouldn't even need to supply this parameter because it's already right there. And so I run it, it runs. So we're going to use that to mock request. Now here's the challenge you're going to have. Notice that request it has request the actual module. Request module, it's like Ajax, right? It makes Ajax calls in Node. It's very similar to fetch on the client browser. It's utilized inside this function. There's no exposure or way to get at this. Sheenon was actually overriding the module, but in our case, we have to expose it. Now we're not going to expose it in our module. What we're going to do is how do you expose things and functions to keep them pure? Via inputs. So we're going to say request function. We're going to change this function to require two parameters instead of one. The first is the request function. And instead of request being referenced to this magic library that we imported, instead, we're going to force those who use this function, put it as the first parameter. So now whatever they put in, we'll utilize. So this is a lot more encapsulated. It has no idea about the outside world of this request. And you can pass whatever you want in there. However, notice get weather uses it as well. And the only thing exported from this module this could be a public function on the client. In Node's case, it's the only thing exported from the module. We still have to do it here as well. So let's put it as the first parameter and then pass it to request it. So now we've modified two function signatures to allow them to dynamically pass things. Those using get weather are not going to want to understand why do I have to pass request? Like, why can't you just import it in your module and use it? They will then have to import requests on their own. And that's ridiculous. They don't want to have to do that. We're going to change this name for now to an underscore. And then we're going to rename get weather to just be a partial. Take the get weather function, but automatically include requests for you. So that way, people who want to use get weather, 99% of the people who use get weather won't even know that internally request is being put for them as the first parameter. All they know to do is use it like this in the unit test where they say get weather and they pass the city and state. What they really don't understand is internally, that's actually a function that takes three parameters. The first is request. So nice little way to do that. However, we still need to expose this to test it. And I'll show you how to deal with publics and privates in the future. For now, we're going to expose it for unit test purposes. I'm going to go up top and we're going to remove Sheenon and the request. So we don't need any more. We're just going to import the private implementation for now because the public that we're exposing is just a partially applied function. Going to get rid of all that Sheenon setup. We don't have to deal with that anymore. Now we still have to deal with the, oh, by the way, did I import Lodash? Nope. Let me import the letter real quick. All right. We still have to do with the mock. So we, we still have like one or two lines of, of a mock. So this mock request, it's going to go in the first parameter here. We don't need Sheena for this. We can create it ourselves. It's just an object that has a get method. It requires two parameters, a URL and a callback. And if you don't remember, we can look again. Right? Remember, it takes a URL and then it'll call this callback when it's done with the error if it failed or not. The request that it sent in the body and so what we're going to do is the same thing, but we're going to always work. Now, again, our job with mocks or stubs or fakes or fixtures or whatever you call them is to do the bare minimum to make the test pass. We are not interested in what GetWeather does internally. We just want to know, hey, man, if I call you these inputs, I expect these outputs every single time. And so we're going to ensure that with this mock that does very similar to Sheenon, where we don't care about the error because it's undefined. So that means it, quote unquote, successful. We don't care about the response. And we're going to copy what we did from Sheenon where we emulate the object it sends back. And that is an object with main that has a temp property that should exist. We're just going to do this for readability purposes, but it could be whatever, as long as it's not undefined. So now when we pass mock request internally, we rerun our unit tests. It works just as before, pretty fast. And we can turn off our wireless and show that again, it's proof that it's using our mock up here and you can log this if you wanted to. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you use function partials or partially applied applications or partially applied functions to mock your dependencies in unit testing. It requires a lot less setup. There's no state here. You don't have to worry about setup or teardown. In fact, you could put this up here to allow other its to use it if you wanted to. And if you wanted to be good practice, you could wrap this in before reach, but there's no state. It's just a function. You're not modifying variables. You don't have to reset anything. It's a lot less code to create your mocks. And this can grow as complexity of these things grow.